Imagine living in a giant metal can, floating 250 miles above the Earth with only a handful of other people for company. Sounds fun, right? Well, that's what some brave astronauts and cosmonauts have been doing for the past 21 years on the International Space Station. The ISS is an amazing feat of engineering and science. It's bigger than a football field, has more room than a jumbo jet, and hosts hundreds of experiments that help us learn about our planet and beyond. But nothing lasts forever. Not even a space station that costed 150 billion US dollars. Indeed, the ISS is getting old and tired, it's losing air from tiny cracks that are hard to find and fix, it's also costing a lot of money to keep it running and safe. That's why NASA wants to retire the ISS by 2030, but there's no guarantee it'll last that long. Which brings us here today. NASA and other space agencies are working on new stations that will take the place of the ISS. But but what will these new stations look like, and who will be in charge of them? Today, we're covering four next-generation space stations from top-level players in the industry. So, let's get started on today's episode of Great SpaceX. The first one on the list is, you guessed it, Starship. NASA is partnering with SpaceX to make Starship space stations. What? Starship space stations? That sounds crazy! Well, each Starship has more volume than that of the International space station. Bet you didn't know that. They're also similar in size to the external fuel tank of the old space shuttle. There were many space station proposals based upon the external fuel tank of the space station. It'll be easier to build with SpaceX's starships. The steel construction of the starship alone makes them easy to weld, cut, and modify. SpaceX's starships will start being able to support astronauts. Space radiation computations suggest that orbits below about 500 kilometers and close to the equator have radiation levels so low that little or no radiation shielding is required. A giant wheel of starships could rotate for the equivalent of one gravity and could be placed where they could easily have safe radiation levels. Having a large volume for space stations makes it easy to stack supplies around the hull to boost radiation protection. Using up one meter thick space for shielding would use up all the space of a small capsule, but a 900 cubic meter volume would still have 90% of the interior space after stacking supplies for one meter of shielding. 50 starships at 20 million dollars each would only still be a billion dollars. There will be room for 350 people based upon International Space Station standards. The ISS was designed to hold only seven. Each starship could hold the same and could surge up to 450. The ISS had a record of nine people during a handover in 2009. Also, it costed about a hundred billion dollars while a giant starship station with a hundred times the volume would only cost about two billion US dollars. Um, if this works, this is definitely a masterpiece of space technology. The next station we must mention is the Lunar Gateway. Yep, instead of building another space station where the ISS is, about 250 miles up in low Earth orbit, NASA has teamed up with Canada, Europe, and Japan's space agencies to build one near the moon, nearly 240 thousand miles away. NASA plans to begin assembling this space station dubbed the Lunar Gateway in 2024 and it expects to play a pivotal role in its plans to maintain a human presence on the moon and eventually send astronauts to Mars and beyond. In other words, at its most basic level, Gateway is Lunar Park and Ride, a place where astronauts can transfer from one vehicle such as an Orion capsule that launched atop NASA's Space Launch System rocket from Earth into a lunar lander, like a specially modified version of space SpaceX's enormous new Starship rocket, which has won the contract to take the first astronauts down to the surface. When it comes to building a new space station, NASA of course isn't starting from scratch. They've been able to infuse a lot of the technology from the ISS. One clear example of this is how Gateway will be powered. In 2017, NASA launched an experimental mission to test a new type of solar array called iRosa. Instead of needing to launch panels fully formed, NASA launched it folded up and unfurled it in space, saving both weight and volume in the cargo bay. Because of this successful in-space experimentation, Gateway will be using the same system from day one. However, there are also significant differences to the ISS, which Gateway designers need to plan for. It's just a completely different radiation and thermal environment around the moon than we have 
have here at the LEO. But the difference doesn't stop at just the technicalities. The ISS was designed for 24-7 usage as an orbiting science lab, but while it will still support scientific research, Gateway is designed for shorter stays as astronauts transit to and from the moon, and it'll remain empty for extended periods. So the economics of Gateway are very different, which has led to certain design choices. Resupply missions to the Gateway will also be more expensive than to the ISS. NASA is trying to be smarter about how it manages resources on the Gateway. They're trying to really reduce the reliance on other pieces of equipment. The Lunar Gateway will only initially be one-sixth the size of the ISS. There is much more scope for expansion by adding new modules or reconfiguring the existing layout. Ultimately then, whatever vehicle eventually takes humans to Mars could end up looking something like the Lunar Gateway. But of course, it'll be a sad day when sometime in the 2030s, the ISS is shuttered and sent into a controlled burn in Earth's upper atmosphere. But it'll be leaving a technological legacy that will have gotten humans back to the moon. Thanks to the Gateway, the next giant leap won't just be more steps on the moon, it could be the first small steps towards getting humans to Mars as well. Another highly anticipated station coming to a sky near you is the one from Axiom Space. In January of 2020, Axiom won NASA's contract to construct the first commercially manufactured module for the ISS. Our first module is going to be in 2026. David Zuniga, Senior Director of In-Space Solutions at Axiom, recently updated. The company's previously stated target was for 2024. Three additional modules would follow. Each module is itself a spacecraft. So, after a rocket carried each craft to orbit, it would rendezvous with the aging space station. The earlier modules would get power and some thermal control from the ISS. Once they get that fourth module, then they have the full capability to be independent of the ISS. Axiom's station could then detach from the ISS and orbit Earth on its own. The station would combine the carbon dioxide that crew members exhale with hydrogen from water to create the methane that can fuel orbit raises, debris of avoidance maneuvers, and more. Axiom also wants to make living on the station a pleasant experience, at least on the spectrum of space station life. If you look at the inside of the ISS, it generally looks like a crazy person's garage, the company says. There's just stuff everywhere, there's wires everywhere, and artists' renderings of the crew quarters inside Axiom's station featured eggnog colored walls and small, bright, but warm lights. The crew quarters would have large, earth-facing windows, and the station would also have an earth observatory that would fly to the station with the third module and attach to the bottom of the station. The observatory's eight roughly six by three foot windows arranged in an octagon would be the largest space windows ever by far. The observatory would be able to hold the entire crew and they could, for example, all share a meal in it. Just make sure you wipe up after yourself. And last but definitely not least, we've got to talk about Blue Origin's future space station. Designed to open multiple new markets in space, orbital Reef would provide anyone the opportunity to establish their own address in orbit. This unique destination will offer research, industrial, international, and commercial customers the cost-competitive end-to-end services they need, including space transportation and logistics, space habitation, equipment accommodation, and operations including onboard crew. I can see it now. McDonald's and Starbucks in space. The station will start operating in the second half of this decade. Orbital Reef will be operating as a mixed-use business park in space. Shared infrastructure efficiently supports the proprietary needs of diverse tenants and visitors. It features a human-centered space architecture with world-class services and amenities that is inspiring, practical, and safe. As the premier commercial destination in low Earth orbit, Orbital Reef will provide the essential infrastructure needed to scale economic activity and open new markets in space. Reusable space transportation and smart design accompanied by advanced automation and logistics will minimize cost and complexity for both traditional space operators and new arrivals, allowing the widest range of users to pursue their goals. The open system architecture allows any customer or nation to link up and scale to support demand. Module berths, vehicle ports, utilities, and amenities all increase as the market grows. The orbital reef business model makes it easy for customers and is strategically designed to support a diverse portfolio of uses. Team has all the services and systems to meet the needs of emergent customers, including researchers, manufacturers, and visitors. The future of space exploration is bright and exciting. 
In the next decade, we will see the launch of four new space stations that will expand our knowledge and capabilities in orbit. These stations will offer new opportunities for science, tourism, commerce, and collaboration. They will also inspire the next generation of explorers and dreamers. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress in the development of the next generation of orbital space stations. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.